Psalms chapter 85, Psalms number 85, verses 8, 9, and 10. In NIV, I like it in NIV, especially the verse 8, I will listen. I will listen to what God, the Lord, will say. The word listen is intentional. I will hear. There are many things we hear that we don't understand. The word that is translated here or listen has to do with heat. 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 To heat means I will obey. I will act by the word. I will move by the word. I will do business by the word. I will marry by the word. I will engage in relationship by the word. I will play by the word. Say, I will listen to what God the Lord will say. Whatever he will say. I will listen in order to hear. And I will hear in order to act. Because he promises peace. He promises peace. I love what the minister, Deacon Florence, says that even in my challenges, God is good. Even when he punishes and corrects, he is good. He promises peace to his people. That is why we listen. When he speaks to somebody who is in error, in sin, it is because he wants to bring peace. When he speaks to somebody who is broken, because he wants to bring peace. When he speaks to the sick, the intention of God, as you sit here, as God speaks and you hear, there will be healing. A young man walked up to me in the Rising Stars Assembly. I don't know if he stayed around. I just told him he will testify. Maybe when the time comes. I don't know if he's here today or if he's here in this service. Came and shook my hands and he told me this is I have been longing to see. I'm meeting you for the first time. Say, I met you in my dreams. In my dreams, you prayed for me, and I woke up and I got delivered from a problem I've been having. In a dream, you prayed for me concerning that problem, and I woke up into deliverance. That thing is gone. So I came to tell you. So he was coming here for the first time. In dream, in a dream, he has never met me physically. I don't know what it is that he was delivered from. He used the word delivered. I was delivered from what I have been suffering. And you prayed for me in a dream. And I woke up and I was delivered. You see, what we do here is the representation of the one who speaks peace. And the key is, I will listen. I will. You may not speak it the way you want it. He may not speak it the way you expect it. Why? He's not your servant. Your servant speaks what you expect him to. But your master speaks what he wants you to hear. But the servants and the master, they say something, they speak. The servant speaks what you expect. And if you, do, if, if you don't hear what you expect, you shut it down and no, that's, what I, that's not what I expect. But your master speaks from above, not from below. And the only response is, I will listen. I will hear. I will heed. I will act upon it. The ancients achieved God's purpose in life by the disposition of I will I will listen. Not because it's favorable to me, not because it validates me in my condition, but I will listen. Why? At the end of his speaking, the intention of God is to bring peace. The word peace in Hebrew is shalom. The word peace that is used in rendering shalom in English, does no justice, no justification to the word shalom. Shalom is a basket of words. 
peace is absence of strife. When we hear the word peace, it's all about that there is no trouble, no war. So the nation is at peace. At peace, maybe people are hungry, too tired, and too hungry to fight. So everywhere is quiet and at peace. But the Hebrew word shalom is not just absence of strife. It's the presence of many things. So when in a Hebrew, in the Hebrew world, that somebody says, Shalom Adonai, the peace of the Lord upon you. It is not just that there's the peace of the Lord, that means no strife, no trouble from Satan. It means the health of the Lord. The strength of the Lord. For the barren, the fruitfulness of the Lord. The well-being of the Lord. The rest, the contentment, the satisfaction of the Lord. The wealth of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The faithfulness of the Lord. The strength. So the peace of God speaks to everyone in the corner and the side and the location of his needs. For the one in distress and fear, the peace when Jesus will say to the disciples, peace, don't be afraid. Peace means for the insecure, be secured. Security. I am here with you. Provision. I am here with you. So to the needy, satisfaction. To the wandering, direction. So I will hear, say I will listen. Is that your own? I will listen. Why? God does not speak like an arrow that passes above your head. God speaks like an arrow that targets you in the place of your need. And the only way by which he, he does and manages your kidney if you are in dialysis and God takes over the responsibility of managing your kidney he does not recommend another therapy he speaks peace to kidney and when he speaks to the kidney in dialysis it means steady the one who forms you reforms you Rise and lift up your two hands and say, I will hear. Just speak in the Holy Spirit however you can. Say, Lord, I will hear what you have to say concerning me. Just speak, just speak. Speak. Speak concerning you. Say, Lord, I will hear. I'm not here to avoid your word. I am not here to evade your word. I am not here to take cover from your word. I am here exposed to your word. Lord, you have eternal word. Eternal word. In my and God, your word. He said, He said, For a, you are infinite, you are the ultimate. I trust you, I trust you, you are infinite no end and you are the ultimate none like you none above you i trust means i rest in you i trust you you are the infinite and you are the ultimate above trouble that is you above darkness that is you 
Above sickness, there is you. Above prostrate, there is you. Above shame, there is you. Above distress, there is you. Above disgrace, there is you. Above, above, above everything. Above it all. There is you on top of it all. The Adonai. The El Shaddai. Yahweh. The one who is. The one who was. The one who is to come. Raise your voice and raise your hand. And just speak like I trust you. I will hear what the Lord. The Lord God has to say. He promises peace. Oh, 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 I trust you. No, oh, 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 I trust. I trust in your word. I trust in your spirit. I trust you. 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 I trust. I trust you. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. I trust you. You are infinite. There will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results. If you will hear, there, there will be results in health, in strength. In lifting, in deliverance, there will be results. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. I trust you. I trust you. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. I trust you. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Try and be seated. Let's do surgery. I trust God for medical surgery. Why? What does surgery need? Knife. A surgical knife that is sharp enough to delicately separate 
what will kill from the rest of life. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. This scripture came to my spirit while sitting with God this morning. For the word of God is living and powerful. This is the testimony of the eternally written word. No matter what the world is doing, the world would not rewrite the Bible. Pope Francis will never rewrite the Bible. I'm happy to hear that Catholic bishops in Nigeria have reason to say that Pope Francis is not speaking on their behalf. And then the Catholics will now learn that a Pope can be fallible. I don't want to talk about that. For the word of God is living and what? Powerful. There is no authority that can deny that. I talked about surgery. I don't know who my God has in mind. My spirit tells me surgery will take place. That's what my spirit tells me. That's the intention. The only key is that I will hear. I will hear here is active, intentional. I will hear in order to act, to heed, to obey. And what are you going to hear today? The world is what? Is living. The word living means capable of causing things to live. A living person is one capable of causing life and capable of interacting with life, playing out life. They said the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. God trusts his word. I don't trust any other thing when I stand here. I trust his word. When I stand here, I wear another person. I have learned that. Last week I stood here on Sunday. And I said something and I said, oh, I wish I said this while we're still on radio. I, normally I shouldn't say that. I know there are women who have certain afflictions and they can be pregnant for two years before they give birth. I have seen a child that was that is called, as at the time I knew I was 11 years, but actually her age is 12 years. The other one year was spent in the womb. <laughs> And eventually, through the hand of God, she went. But there are so many people I also know who carry chemicals. Chemicals that project falsely pregnancy. And some of these women are actively working in deception to deceive their husbands. Some by the deception of medical personnel that want to have a name. They say, oh, in that, that they have fertility grace. Once you go there, in two, three months, you will take in. And they will take you in by chemical and manipulate all sort of things. And so children disappear from, young, from mothers to be given to women that have been promised pregnancy that did not happen. So I said that and after that I am the first lady we analyze it and we say oh so who was in church that such a word will come because it will be it will sound insensitive because I also hear those who say I've been pregnant so long and I came to Grace family and the man of God didn't even touch me he just spoke and I went hard labor and I had my I've heard such testimony 
So how will you stand and speak that word? The reason is because when I stand here, the word of God is sharper than what? To a gesture. So you may hear something that in your ear does not mean anything. There is somebody that surgery is taking place. They were pierces to secrets that are in the marrow, hidden from the eyes of everyone today. God will expose secret that is hidden. So when I say surgery, there is a medical surgery. There is a spiritual, whatever one you fall into, emotional surgery means a separation of the twin, the conjoined twin, the twinning together of the heart and what will destroy. It takes the knife to pierce into delicate places that you, for you, it is one. What do you do is one. But for the knife and the one hand and the eyes of the one who carries the knife, it is sharp enough to separate what looks like one, but it's not one. Whatever appears to be one in order to corrupt, to destroy, to thee, there is separation. In the name of Jesus, say, I will hear. That sounds like a letter here. Be seated. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. How do you divide soul and spirit? Spirit is in immaterial. Soul also speaks to the immaterial dimension of life. Soul speaks to the faculties that we call the heart and the mind. In neuroscience, we can talk about brain. And in medical science, we can talk about the cardiac. These are physical, biological stuffs. But when the scripture talks about soul, which is the dimension of the thinking, the imagination, the desire in the mind and in the heart, it is in the realm of the intangible, the immaterial. That means the spiritual. So when the word of God says separating soul and spirit, it, it, it looks like foolishness. It's like separating what is intertwined and co-joined. I don't know whether Nigeria has dealt with the issue of co-joined twins. Twins that are born together with one head. Separate lives, but they share it. <laughs> God has spared us. Amen. Oh, praise God. But the word of God says, I will separate. Say, I will hear. I will praise God. You will hear. So there will be separation. Will you hear it? Yes. To the division of soul and spirit, the word is sharper than anything to the degree of separating spirit and the spiritual. And joints and marrow, this is, this is botany and anatomy. <laughs> Am I correct? Botany and anatomy. Joints and marrow. <laughs> Praise God. So you can see what the realm of the world, operation of the world. Look at different levels. Look at different levels. Marrow and joint. And is a designer of what? Thoughts and intents. <sighs> See, this is why God trusts his word. So if we, can, we come to church and we prophesy and feel good and see vision and speak in languages and heal the sick, God says after that, Apply the word to separate. Do surgery. Separate hearts from evil. Separate hearts from evil desire. Separate a man from what will destroy a family. Separate a woman from what will waste the children. Separate a heart from what will 
cause marriage to collapse. Separate a, the young person from what will destroy the future of God's glory. And God trusts that this will happen when the word is employed and deployed. And it begins by saying, I will hear what the Lord will say. Because what will happen at the end is that there will be peace. Next verse, verse 13. And there is no creature, no Satan, no devil, no power, no epilepsy, no leprosy that is hidden from his sight and may not see fiber. But the word sees fiber. And may not see prostrate complication. When I speak, I am seeing it. So when I say you are healed, your own is I will hear. Because he will speak peace. So this morning I bring you the sword that is sharper than all. If your own needs separation in marrow and bones, I employ and deploy. If it is a separation of the soul from the spirit, I bring it to bear exactly. I see in the eyes of God, I move in the hand of God, I breathe in the breath of God. I Operate in the oppression of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say, I will, I will hear. Last week we started the project of talking about the overflow life. The overflowing life. The overflow. And let me remind you, the Greek word that is translated in what we can call overflow is called is perisos. Perisos. Let me make it easy for you. Perisos, like peri and sauce. Peri is P E R I double S O S. That is perisos. Let's go back to the text. John chapter 10, verses, verse 7 to 10. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I said to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9. I am the door. Second time. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pastor. Umpado. Amen, amen, Sincerely. The first lady is the gatekeeper of this call in this expression. So she had this encounter in the realm of the spirit about communion. And these few days brought me, she had shared this with me, but she shared again a few days ago. And my eyes were open. And for the first time I started using it, I realized, oh, this is a message to me. And I want to share it with you because it makes sense. And I had to say in effect, Mparo. And a mama. That death has done it all. What struck this chord is the fact of Jesus saying, Whoever enters through me will do what? Whoever, a useless person from a hopeless family, no hope, no future, nothing. But if you can just enter by me, what will happen instantly is that you'll be able to go out without molestation and limitation and return. Some people go out and they don't return. Some people return, they cannot go out. No access, no exit, no, just one way. You say you have not one way. You have two ways. 
with what you don't like, what is not good for you, you can come out of it. What is good for you, you can enter into it and you will find pastor in each case. Find pastor means you will have results. If it is what should not happen, you come out of it and have results, pastor. If it is what is good for you, you enter and you find pastor. And the word broke out in my spirit. That revelation of Ian the first lady and the doorkeeper broke out. So I can share. Can I, can I share? So she had this encounter. And by the grace of God, this encounter has come. That she was sitting on the table of communion with different individuals. And Jesus Christ was sitting there. With the bread, his body in his hand. And he would have conversation with individual on that table of communion, like round table, and different individuals there. And he will have conversation with them. If he's talking to Tony, Tony, welcome to church. Tony Afia is in church. Planet, hello, Planet. Tony is here. Let's celebrate glory to him. If he's talking to Tony, if he's talking to Tony, Chief will not hear. She will not hear, but you will know she's talking to somebody. And so she talked to ind different individuals. And then when it was her turn, that the Lord lifted the body and asked her, what does this mean for you? Come again. Okay, what does my death mean to you? Now, the Lord was talking to others on this table of communion, giving them, and she did not hear what he said to others, but when her turn came, the question was, what does my death mean to you? And then she sat down. And she was trying to find out words to say. And she said, like a hymn. Like, as she looked, as she looked at the body that the Lord carried, a hymn scrolled out. That in that dream, she understood that, that hymn. But in this real life, she, there's no hymn like that that she can refer to. As she looked at the body, like during, during the breaking of bread and I lift up, it said, behold, this is my body, which is broken for you. As she saw that the Lord himself lifting up, said, what does my death mean? As she was looking at the body, the hymn scrolled out. And the last stanza of the verse, or the last line of the verse, it was, pardon? The first line, beautiful. The very first line that she could read means, Mparo and Amama. That means, in answer to the question, what does my death? You know, Paul says, when we eat, we are proclaiming his death. We are announcing, remembering his death. That means every time you receive communion, there is a question. What does my death, which gave you this body and blood, what does it mean to you? You see, you can bring cancer and it doesn't mean anything to you. So, cancer will not be healed until Mparo. That death means end of cancer. It is you that must answer the question. So she said, that's him and she loves him. When we started out our family devotion, every day we used to sing him. We have tried to bring back the hymn. These young ones, they don't understand him. They sing their own songs. And we have to accommodate their own songs. But we love to sit down and sing our traditional hymns. And I love what happened today. Just loved, loved the hymns. Love There's one particular hymn that I heard that had almost blew my head. Wonderful. Mparo Anamama. The first line of the hymn. Means that death has done it all. That was her own response. She had told me this encounter before. I am a, a receiver. When she does it, she just wakes up. You know, and she just talks in order not to forget. I remember yesterday, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, it became a rema for me. And I looked at her in the eyes and I told her, Mparu. And I'm a man. And it just meant everything to me. And it has been prayer and living for because it's just too deep for me. I can't explain it. So when Jesus Christ says, if you enter by me, did you hear that? Let's look at that scripture. 
I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will. Anyone. Say anyone. Guy, when you hear the word anyone, what does it apply to you? Anyone with anything. The only thing is that just enter by me. It's not about what you carry. It's not about how long you carry it. It's not about what prophets say about it. Somebody will tell you, Jim, I see somebody dead. And I say, Mpado. Ananana. Oh, they were looking for a place to bury. And I say, Mpado. Ananana. Oh, I saw that the ministry collapsed. And everybody was running elter, elter, elter scatter. What do I say? That death has done it wrong. <laughs> ah, one stone that kills all the bed. It's like I am mad. Like undoubtable. Like it has entered my head. Like my head pass. Because that death has done it all. Whoever can enter by me. Just enter by me and see. From that moment, you will be able to do what? Go in. Go into joy. When they say there is no joy available to you. Go into peace. When everything says peace has ended. Go into rest. When they say rest finished before you were born. Go into health. When they say there is no cure that can bring you help, go into and if you had gone into something and you didn't know, or you were born into something you didn't know, what does it say again? Out. You can go out. He said, no, nobody enters this thing and, and, and goes out again. Mparo. Out. That death has certainly rise up and speak her. Right here on speaking. What does his death mean to you? Personal. Let's do surgery. Let's apply this revelation in the understanding of this world. What does the death of Jesus when he died for you personally? What does that death mean to you? Mparo. That death has set it all. Settle it. That death settles cancer and hemorrhage. That death has settled it. So that death has settled it. That death. I saw my minister yesterday on Friday as we were marching in for a wedding. And I saw her. She had come out. <laughs> I saw her. I saw how she also moved. And there were the ones who walked in the front. She also walked. Like, I said, oh, look at her. Because a few weeks ago, I saw this woman with walking stick coming to church. I don't know if you notice it. This kind of walking stick that has multiple, like Iborina. And she would then not stand up. And during the Goshen 24, I say, Captain Biakmin, time you think I'll come and hold you with your leg. He said, Rise up. So when I say people stand up, I have intention. What does it mean to you? So after that, I just forgot. He said, We cannot be talking about the God who saved by power and might. And a minister who normally walks up there. Now go up and come down. Let me see. Now go up and come down. Let me see. Glory. Mparo. And now you come back. Now you come. Do you need my help? Mparo. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to yourself. That one death has settled it all. One of those days, I saw this woman. One normal, ordinary woman who came into Grace Family. And when she goes out up there to pray, you know a warrior is on, the, on, on, is on duty. Now seeing her struggling with plenty headed kind of walking stick and she will sit down and during inauguration she stood there almost uh, I laugh I said me I cannot come and touch that leg 
you will be the one to touch the leg. That one death has done what? Said. Lift up your two hands. What does his death mean to you? What are you supposed to come out of right now? What are you supposed to go into right now? That one death has settled. If you will hear, I will hear what the Lord, the Lord God will say. He will speak peace. He will speak healing. He will speak strength. He will speak power. He will speak healing to prostrate. He will raise the impotence back to strength. He will make new wombs spring out for children. A woman came yesterday and said, it's like magic. I can't believe I am pregnant. And she had come. I said, oh, how many children do you have? I have just one outside. I said, you go and have other children. And she was like, I said, is in. So when she didn't see her period, she thought it's menopause. I said, how old are you? I said, I'm 45. I said, 45, you don't start menopause. He said, it's too magical for me. I just, is this how they, they get pregnant? The distance between this one and this one is in teenage. Like teens, like kind of thing. No. Mparo. That death. Oh, give a shout. That death. Shout that death. Say, I enter by that death. Say, I enter by that death. Say, I come out from by that death. Say, I break through by that death. Say, I recover by that death. Lay hold. Speak with all of your heart. I am forgiven by that death. I am restored by that death. My hormonal balance returns. By that death, uh, my strength is back. By that death, uh, favor returns. Uh, by that death, uh, glory breaks out. Be serious. Sincerely, I would have loved to turn this into a testimony service. Because it just looks like there's somebody who just will want our own testimony to be recorded. I don't know. I don't know. Sincerely, I just feel like there is somebody who just wish, will, he, will he allow me to share this one? I don't know. In case you are the one, you can interrupt me. While I want to, sincerely, that is what I heard. Just one person. Don't, don't hold it back. You know, we don't always have like it. Okay, so you don't waste my time. Ah, it's here. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. Oh glory. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But see what I have come to do. See my agenda. See why I want to be your savior. See why I want to rule in your life. See why I want to be your way, your truth, and your life. See why I want to be your meaning system, your foundation, your substance. See why I want to be your culture, your custom, your tradition. See why I want to be your father, your mother, and your brother. See why I want to be your Lord, your Savior, and your deliverer. It is just this one thing. So that you are not stolen, you are not killed, and you are not destroyed. That's not all. If that were to be all, it would just be peace as peace in English. Absence of being stolen. Absence of being killed. Absence of being destroyed. But I bring peace, which is the presence of health in sickness. The presence of strength in weakness. The presence of sight to the blind. The presence of light in darkness. The presence of... So peace is not just about the lack of something. Peace in Hebrew as shalom is the presence of something. The presence of something where things are not expected normally. In this economy, there are certain things that are not expected. But it says, I will hear the voice of the Lord God for he will speak shalom. The presence of things 
where it is not expected. The presence of stops where they are not expected. Where they will cause surprises and eyebrows to be raised. Why? I have come that they may have life and that they may have it. Perisos. Perisos. The Greek word perisos, which I told you, is what is translated as more abundantly. Last week I tried to give you few, few lines of what perisos in Greek means. What is translated more abundantly in Greek means excessive. Come so that you may have excessive joy, excessive light, excessive. Not just for you and your children, for everyone in your world. And for as, as far as your eyes can see, superfluous, superfluous. The word superfluous speaks of even waste. Sometimes it just feels like it's too much, too abundant that it is now being wasted. It cannot be contained, uncontainable, unlimited. It's not something that can be mitigated. You cannot help it flows. It's like the pipe. Not pi there are pipes and there are pipes. There are pipes that are broken. An entire community is inundated. An entire community is flooded pipe. The pipe of God's blessing is not just a pipe that contains what you need. It's a pipe that gets broken in your domoth. <laughs> I love it the way Pigeon will say your domoth. In at the mouth of your house. Yes, sir. I'm talking about the pipe of God's favor being broken at your domoth. Your, the, 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 the door. Is it the door? The mouth. Of your habitation, so that there is superfluous. So can you walk in tomb? It is perisos, extraordinary, beyond measure. You came with GP tank, it is full. You came with the other tank, full. You came with an ocean, full. You came with Antarctica, full. You came with the other one, Indian, full. The South China Sea, full. The north is full. The south is full. Extraordinary, beyond measure, exceeding rank and needs. God does not meet your need when it comes. So the issue of need is not God's plan. God's plan is above needs. Because if it is just needs, it will be contained within the perimeter and the sphere of your needs. But it comes so that not just your needs, but needs of your world, of your universe, of your planet, of your systems, and galaxies, and Milky Ways will be met. It means above what is necessary. Say, say unnecessary favor. You see, even the way you say it, you are afraid. You don't want to be implicated. You don't want to say you say you believe, but it does not manifest. I didn't say it is your own. I just say you should say it. Say unnecessary favor. Unnecessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did God actually have to take me through Catholic priesthood and now tell me it's time to move, sir? It's so unnecessary. Everybody, my brothers, my friends, my family said, but you say God said she should become a Catholic priest. That was necessary. Leave, go and marry and have children. That's all necessary. <laughs> go and be father. That was what? Necessary. It met the need. My brothers had Reverend Father as their brother. <laughs> he met the needs of people. But okay, you can marry and have children in case this space is not enough for you. And you can preach as you like. Annoy who you want to annoy. <laughs> and you don't owe anybody apology. And some of them will be offended and come back the next time. Is that unnecessary? Is unnecessary. 
Sincerely, it's unnecessary. See, the God of unnecessary favor. That in all this, he will show you that there are things after things. And there, are, there is a life beyond life. So whatever life you have, can I tell you something? There is life beyond life. This one is necessary. The other one is unnecessary. It is reserved for those who understand that Mbaro and uh, that death, that one, that singular death are settled permanently, eternally. The salvation of everyone who will come through him. Do re mi, do fa, fa mi re, do re mi, do re mi, do fa, fa mi re, re do ti do. Do re mi, fa mi re, re so fa mi, do re mi, do fa, fa mi re, do ti do. <laughs> Praise the Father. Praise the Son. I <laughs> love it. Praise the Spirit. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Mary, come. Three. God of glory, majesty, <laughs> praise forever to the King. Do do so so do re mi fa mi do. Darkness, we were waiting. Without hope, without life, <laughs> there was mercy in your eye. Unnecessary, heal the Lord and prophets to a virgin came the world <laughs> from a throne of endless glory to a crowd of the dead. Don't touch Praise the Father. Praise the. Where's Anyet here? Where's Anyet? Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was a salvation, Jesus for us said. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, sing one, God of glory, majesty, praise for See, praise! Praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit, sing one, God of love, majesty, Oh, 
palabras con cariño. I just tell you a strong weapon. I am the angels good in all. For the souls of all who come to the Father. And you hear it Cannot by his blood. Easter before Easter. Pray. Just go ahead and praise. Raise your voice and praise. Raise your voice and praise. Raise your name. Raise his name. Raise your voice. Be seated. You see, the unnecessary favor that salvation in Christ brings us is first of all founded in the unnecessary death of Jesus on the cross. Did God have to die? Could he not have saved? For he who can do all things, could he not have spoken and everything will be done? Was it necessary? Was it necessary for the world to become flesh? To be revealed as son? And then to be found in human form in all things except sin? To be tempted in all the ways that we are tempted? And yet they're not saved. Was it necessary for the flesh to be put upon the, in, the eternal world? Was it necessary for Pilate to judge him? For the Jewish authorities to reject him, for Barabbas to take his place, and for him to take the place of Barabbas. Was it necessary for God to be slapped by young soldiers? Was it necessary for him to surrender his hands to be pierced? 
and to carry this car till now. Was it necessary? The salvation he brought is beyond necessary. It's beyond need. So don't just come and hope he will just, just bandage your wound and just leave you, uh, for, spare you for another time. I told you that size is what makes the difference. How far can you open wide your mouth? That's the scripture we saw last week that we try to see again. 81, Psalm 81 verse 10. I am the Lord your God. I am not your forefather. I am not your grandfather. I am not your president. I am not your governor. I am not your politician. I am not those in federal house. I am not confused in the senate. I am not clueless in presidency. I am not blind in governorship. I am not hopeless as a politician. I am not, I'm not a clan head that has no reason to be head. I am not a paramount ruler. My case is not in the court to know whether is a monarch or not. I am the Lord your God. Senate does not judge me. United Nations does not adjudicate. International Court of Justice cannot trespass. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt? Listen to me. Open your mouth. Why? This is why he brought your necessary life. Life that is beyond your needs. And yet you are scraping by. You just look. Just... Just walk around like an orphan. And to be a Christian for you is stupid and useless to follow him. Because you are content being in the place of insecurity and hopelessness and dependent on, on the uncertain foundation of the elements and humanity. God is saying, he introduced himself. First of all, I am the Lord your God. Count me out of the people who made promises and did not keep. Count me out of all of this. Do not trust me the way you trust your father that you did not, that was not a perfect father. Don't trust me the way you trusted your mother who will not keep her words. Trust me the way you will trust the ultimate and the infinite. I brought you out. I have done it before. Did you make yourself? No. Then open wide your mouth. Don't just open your mouth. He told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, he asked Jeremiah, what is it that you can see? Why did Jesus, today, let me just end this message. I should have ended it now, but let's just end it this way. So that next week we can move forward. Why did Jesus bring Saul of Tarsus to his team? By the time Jesus was walking the earth, nobody heard about the Saul of Tarsus. He was not in the picture. He was born walking somewhere. Doing the work of a Pharisee and a lawyer and learning at the feet of Gamaliel. He was not in the picture. He never shook the hands of Jesus. Never walked in his company. He was just one little boy somewhere. But why did Jesus wait years after he died rose? ascended and he was glorified. Peter was working miracles. The, the shadow of the apostles healed the sick, raised the dead. Anger chiefs from the apostles were working miracles. Deacons ran into neighborhoods that were not Jewish and nations turned to Christ. Why was this not enough? Why did God encounter Saul in the acts of apostles? Why? God had to trace me. God told me, I look for a heart and a mind that is large, to, large enough to look for the unnecessary. Those who can push boundary. Those who will not just look for food for their families. Those who just don't want to make money for their pocket. Those who just don't want to have political power to say mando, mambo. What we have been witnessing is a governor will come. He will try to make another governor look like that one does not exist. And then another comes and he tries to be richer, wealthier, bigger, greater than governor. So at the end of it is one man versus another hopeless man. All of them will die. 
But God is saying, I want a man. I want a man. I want a man. Whose heart is so large. Whose vision is so, so large and unnecessarily big that it can, it can contain the excess. Is there any wonder then that Paul is the only one who talked to us about grace? Because grace is the unnecessary action of God. Was it necessary for him to die, pay the price? This is why he brought Paul. Paul had extraordinary heart and large ego of the spirit. He was a man. Paul never saw Jesus in the flesh. But he made everybody believe that he too was an apostle. If you guys had 12 apostles, you better at me, I'm the 13th apostle. And they say one of you died, killed himself, at me. I should have been there. And people went and preached to the Galatians. Don't mind this Paul, he was not an apostle. No. He said, what signs of apostle did they have that I don't have? Tell those apostles to come and show me what is it about them that is more apostolic than me. And nobody could show up. Even Peter submitted that Paul writes in some of his letters things that are too big for people to understand. He said, be careful how you listen to Paul. Oh, that man is too big. Oh. This is the head of the apostle. That's why Jesus brought him. Is it little one that Jesus has not brought you into something? Because your mind is too small. Your mouth is too little. Just want to be pregnant and have children. So that at least, let's go again to one. Let it be said that I'm a woman. I just want to have a son of my own. Let me be a man. Is that all? Is that all the mouth you can open? He said, ask of me, I'll give you nations. Can that mouth size contain nations? What will you do with one child? As soon as Joseph was born, Jacob, after he had ten sons, but Joseph was born, Jacob went and told Laban, let me go. Let me go back to my father's house. A son is born. Do you know the name of your son? He knew one day this son will rule Egypt. He made him coat of many colors. He loved him more than others and provoked the envy of others. Sir, those are the people that God can fight with in the night and they wake up the following day with a different name. The reason why God has not fought you because you don't have what it takes to fight God and have a new life. Your mouth is too small to contain the fight of God. You walk in the realm of prophets, even blind prophets, they take money from you. But you don't know who is your father. You don't know who is your savior. The unnecessary deaths that has settled it all. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Say, Lord, see me here. I am ready. Open my mouth. I cannot open it wide enough. Lord, apply your force. Tear my mouth. Increase my largeness. Increase my size. I cease to be size 9. Size 12 is not enough for me. 15, no way. 100, no way. 1,000, no way. I am size Jesus. I am size God's mercy. I am size God's unnecessary love. I am size God's unnecessary favor. I want to contain all of favor. I want to contain this unnecessary blessing. The blessing too large for me. Blessing meant for generations. Mary received one son, Jesus. He said, ah, from generation to generation, everyone shall call me blessed. Why the Almighty has done great things for me? Just because of one son. If that one son is born in your heart, the song of Mary will be your song. You can sing with Mary. If Jesus is born truly in your heart and born truly in your soul and in your flesh, you are expected to sing the song of Mary. For the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. From generation to generation, they will call me blessed because of what he has done for me. It is not because I am holy. It is not because I am righteous. 
This love is excessive. This love is too good. This mercy is too big. I cannot reduce it to healing. I cannot reduce it to, to prosperity. It is this and that and that and that and that and that and all. Paro anamama. That one death has settled it all. I can go out uh, and come in uh, and I will find pastor. Say I cannot settle down. I cannot settle down. I stop here so that you will not say I'm keeping you too long. Next week, I will open to you the heart of Paul that made Jesus feel incomplete until a man of Tarsus, an enemy, was brought into the camp. How will Jesus look for an enemy to bring to his team because an enemy carried what he wanted? How do you relate with your enemy? You keep them at arm's length, but see how God relates with this enemy. He brought him into the center because he's a man with a large mouth. Dr. Igboto, open wide your mouth. There is still another, there is still another clinic. <laughs> Sir, there is still another clinic. In Obon, there is still another one. Ma, Ma Ipe, there is another one. Ete, chief, I know you have been struggling, but God is not done with you. There is another one. There, there will be joy in the morning. Ete, fia, I don't know what this Mparo what does the, his death mean to you? That's the point. What do you answer? Ask somebody, what does his death mean to you? Whatever it means to you, that is what you have. Mparo Anamama. That death has done it all. That death. Sir, let's end it there. Next week, we can look at the, the spirit of Saul. Sir, God does not just call people into the ministry. Sir, God does not just give people offices. Sir, if it comes from God, it is not careless. There is a spirit in a man, the breath of the Almighty. It brings him inspiration. God is looking at what is inspiring you. God is looking at how far you see. God takes note of how far your mouth. Sir, when I eat with you, don't open your mouth too much. Otherwise, the first lady will tell you. In the first few days of our marriage, eating was difficult because I used to eat alone for several years as a priest. When I have guests, they will finish eating and go, I don't eat with anybody. I sit down and eat alone. Food for me was a private thing. And then when I got married, we took a decision, we eat every day together. When I don't eat, it don't, she doesn't eat well. Though. Don't mind the way she carries her face. So she has to wait for me to come. And I have to wait for her to come. So we eat together. But it was annoying. They wait for the first time I discover so, oh, what's that? You know that another person is chewing meat. And she loves meat. And I will just look at her. And she was also offended by my chewing because she respects me. And she will pretend that I was not offending her. And, she, and I just noticed, oh, so all this while. I've been eating alone. Nobody used to eat and I don't hear how people chew. So my face would change. I would say, hello, Lord, have I done anything wrong? I say, no, you have not done anything wrong. And inside of me, I say, I wish you just know what you have done. <laughs> Sir, so when I'm just warning you, in case you come and eat with me, you dare not just chew anyhow. But when God tells you, open wide your mouth. <laughs> when you eat with God. <laughs> hello, Lord. <laughs> Go ahead. When you eat with God, don't worry about how I treat you. Just if I, if you eat and I notice, open wide your mouth. I'm being man. Am I talking to somebody? If you open your mouth and I'm offended, then what are you going to do? Open wide your mouth. God is looking for who can open wide. God is looking for. Next week, next week. Are you ready? Yeah, we'll soon. Next week, we'll see the spirit that brought an enemy to be a champion of God. 
Sir, adjust your size. Adjust. He said, cut your coat according to your... And some people will say, cut your coat according to your material. They are both nonsense. Cut your coat according to God's size. Go and tell the tailor, I said that. Say, give me extra lash. And you say, but you are like this. Say, who told you? That's what you see. I am wide. I am open. I am a nation. I am a kingdom. I am nations. I am territory. I am God's king. Open wide. Lift up our two hands. Say, I cannot be small. Adjust. 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 Wherever you are, adjust. I don't just want to be lifted. I want to be a lifting. I don't just want to be blessed. I want to be a blessing. I just don't, I don't want to see. I want to be sight to those in darkness. I just don't want to be lifted. I want to be the lifting of my generation. I just don't want to be honored. I want to be the honor of my dispensation. Lord, don't just bless me. Lord, make me a blessing. He told Abraham, I will bless you. But that's not all. I will make you a blessing. Please talk. This is where I rest today. I love you so much that I don't want to keep you. But I want to keep you enough to, to talk. 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 Did I tell you there will be surgery? Kalabo shata. Lama sikato vrekata. Lema kata labo sekete lebrakata. Is there somebody here? And the Lord has convicted you in his word. And you want to report at the altar. Say so take this heart. Take this life. I will no longer stay in that scene, that small place. Is there anybody who wants to identify and witness, declare before God in the sights of men that, Lord, I accept this salvation. I hear the bell ring and I hear my name called. Is there somebody? That I want to say it. I step forward to dedicate this life. This life is no longer mine. Take this life and forgive sins. Make me what you want me to be. I came here with nothing. But all that you have given me. You can just walk down the altar. Walk like nobody cares about you. Because the fact is that who cares about you. And God is looking. Is she ready to open wide her mouth and vomit sin? Is he ready to vomit sin and take a new life? Who is and who is in this place? Who will dare God? Who can dare the God Almighty? Who will dare step into his circle and say, God, here am I. Send me into the last place. Should the Lord want somebody? Here am I. All eyes closed. Say. Should the Lord want somebody? Here. Show the Lord wants someone. <sighs> Show the Lord needs someone. Let's do dedication. 
Here am I. Raise your hand. Eyes closed. Send me. Here am I. Send. Show the Lord. Lift up your right hand and close your eyes. Say, so Lord Jesus, I turn this way. I turn this way. I turn this way to your death. Your death did it all. I receive free forgiveness from the death. I receive free healing from the dead. I receive free salvation from the dead. Mention what the death has done for you. What has the death done concerning your sin? Forgiveness. Restoration. Impartation of the Spirit. Show the Lord wants someone yeah, man. Say. Please lift those hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I give this life all. Whatever I still kept for myself, please, your death means all. Take all. Give me your life. Take my death. Take my shame. Take my disgrace. Take my delay. Take my adversity. Take my pride. Take my backwardness. Take my stagnation. Take my offenses. Take my crimes. Take my, delay, my failure. Take my missing the mark. Take my mediocrity. Give me your life. You died my death so that I can live your life. And your life is unnecessary. I live it all. Your death means life to me. Lay your hand where healing is taking place. Or lay your hand in your forehead. Lay your hand in your chest, any part of your body. Chest pain is gone. That death has done it all. Let me speak in effect. Mparo. Night of Grace Coron. Mpanu Enegre. Night of Grace Coron. Mpanu Anyangura. Mpanu Anyangakuben. Mpanu Anyangirat. That death. That death, that death, that death, that death. Raise your hand, receive that death for your unnecessary manifestation. Abundant, perisous, excessive life, excessive life. Thank you, Jesus.